In this Tokyo ramen industry lockdown series, I'm going to be looking at Tokyo ramen restaurants and how they've been impacted by the novel coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. This includes direct interviews with the ramen restaurants and getting a sense of how they've been coping and even adapting to this new world that we live in. But to end on a positive note, I'll be eating their delicious ramen at the very end. Let's get to it. For those of you new to the channel, I'm Frank from 5AM Ramen. I was born and raised in Tokyo and I eat a lot of ramen. I absolutely love ramen. Today, we're zooming in on a ramen restaurant called Shuichi. They're located near Ebisu Station, just one stop away from the ever popular Shibuya. They serve a supremely tasty and unique curry ramen. Their curry ramen veers away from the traditional, but it's so good. So, back to the topic at hand, the impact of the coronavirus on Shuichi in particular. The Ebisu area is usually super busy, but like a lot of parts of Tokyo, it's now a ghost town. Tokyo declared a state of emergency on April 7 and recently extended this to May 31. This ensuing lockdown has hammered Tokyo restaurants, like we've seen around the world. Normally relying on a high volume of customers, Tokyo ramen restaurants have been among the hardest hit. Chiba-san is the store manager at Shuichi. Here's what he has to say. カレーラーメン、カレーラーメン、カレーラーメン、カレーラーメン、カレーラーメン、カレーラーメン、カレーラーメン、カレーラーメン、カレーラーメン、カレーラーメン、カレーラーメン、カレーラーメン、カレーラ
Okay, now diving into one of their ramen. My favorite ramen there. I've got their also curry-based black sesame tantamen. In addition to that, they've also got black pepper and numbing pepper that gives you this tingling sensation inside your mouth. It's so good. You've got that curry kind of milky creaminess, but it's elevated alongside this black peppery kick as well as that numbing pepper. It comes together all so well. And this dish here, this was actually only available in the fall, but it was so popular that they brought it to the menu permanently. As you can see, the noodles are much rounder. They're not as flat, still quite thick though. And all of their noodles are made by Asakusa Kai Karo. It's a very prestigious noodle manufacturer here in Japan, and they make amazing noodles. Those noodles have such a nice bite to them. Just so good. Compared to the scammon that we just had, which is a little bit milder, more mellow, since they crank it up a notch here with that black pepper undertone, I think it was very wise for them to use toppings that are more in your face, more crispy. That is the bok choy and also the bean sprouts. You might have noticed the baseball sized minced pork ball and mm, by itself it's so full of flavor, beautifully seasoned. And as it melts in the broth, it gives the broth a little bit more of a meaty consistency. And if you pull up the noodles with a little bit of the bean sprouts, it's nice. You get the soft textures and also some of the hard textures there. I think so far so good. Haven't had any splash, but as soon as you say that, of course it goes everywhere, right? For those of you who used to spice, it's not like super, super spicy, but it definitely does make you sweat more. Both bowls are amazing, and I think it just depends on what you're feeling like in the day. I, for example, tend to have a lot of skemen in the summer. Skemen has normally cold noodles. So if you go to a skemen restaurant, restaurant, and you're wondering why are they serving the noodles cold, that's the way they serve them, in either an ice bath or running water through them under the faucet. Basically what that does is that locks in the flavor of the noodles a little bit more and also helps them maintain their firm consistency. They're not cooking in the broth too. So skemen is very much a dish that you need to try. And Shuichi is a great place to do that. Now if we look at the other takeout ramen dish, the curry black sesame tantamen, it's just amazing. I have nothing else to say. In short, both dishes are amazing. Even though both of them have that milder curry base, both of them taste very different just because of those little tweaks that they've done. I hope you enjoyed this takeout ramen video, whether it's ramen or any other type of food. Order delivery, order takeout from these places. They're hurting right now, and this is maybe one small way that all of us can make a difference. In the next ramen industry lockdown slash takeout ramen video, I'm gonna be interviewing a ramen shop that is basically selling their ramen across the country in refrigeratable form. If that sounds like fun, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks everyone for tuning in. This is Frank from 5 Game Ramen reminding you that Tokyo is the only city, takeout included, where you can get great ramen at 5 a.m. コロナウイルスが収まった暁には、ぜひ恵比寿に立ち寄っていただいて、自分たちが作るあれの美味しいラーメンをぜひ食べていただきたいなと思っております。